Hey guys, this is Undercover Dudes all the way from Down Under, and today we're going to be talking about the latest champion in Paladins, Lian, and how personally I think she is a lazy and uninspired character. Before we go and start the Lian gameplay that I'm showing off in this video, it's captured on the public test server. However, I have like 350 ping to the North American servers, and therefore I'm playing against bots, so I don't really go and sabotage my teammates. Also, there's some other parts of the video where I go and show off some other champions. That gameplay is captured on the Australian servers, PvP, casual, all that type of stuff, and overall there's no bots involved. One last thing. This is an opinion commentary. This is my opinion, and I know a lot of people will get upset, and a lot of people will get a little bit angry, but I'd love to go and hear your opinions in the comment section below, and hopefully we can get a little bit of a discussion going. For the time that I've seriously got into Paladins, I've seen the release of Ash, Zin, and now Lian. And of those three, comparing those characters, comparing those champions to the original champions implemented into the game when it was first released, I think it very much shows what High Res is capable of as a studio, in a positive and negative sense. It can go and show that High Res is capable of, of these really unique champions with amazing kits and amazing lore and amazing design. But it can also go and show that High Res, they might be pushing it a little bit too much in order to go and push these champions out with lazy design, very minimalistic lore, and overall very uninspiring champions. Jin for me is one of the most fun champions to play in Paladins right now. It shows off what High Res can really do. Taking the samurai concept and turning it on its head completely, pouring boiling hot oil on the sword and turning a traditionally melee champion into a pseudo ranged champion has never really been done before in these class based first person shooters. His kit is skill orientated with all of his abilities having a purpose but never being the shiny red eye win button. The legendaries and cards completely change his style and Jin's art and lore is top notch. Overall Jin is a shining example of what high res should really go and aim for when they're trying to go and make a champion. Now Ash may not be as cool, but she is still a great champion, a unique set radius explosive primary into a damage reduction charge and a moving shield. Her ultimate just seems lazy though, copy and pasting Fernando's basically. At this point it seemed that High Rose was near their deadline and needed to go and put in something so her kit works. Now I'm not exactly complaining, her lore is great, her character design is great in terms of the visual aspect, but it could still be worked on, there still could be a little bit more time put into the character so she is truly unique. And now we have Lian. I don't know if it's just me but Lian is probably one of the most boring champions in the game right now. Her appeal is legitimately two things. She does a lot of damage and people call on her the next waifu of paladins. The second point isn't exactly the most important to me despite my love of anime so let's focus on the damage. Simply she does a shit ton. Her basic abilities, they hit hard. Her piercing presence ability shreds free enemies. Her grace is an auto lock on dash damaging ability and her ultimate turns you into a cannon basically. She does a lot of damage, but that is really it. Nothing is inventive or even remotely entertaining to use besides the fact you're killing enemies and winning the match. Now yes, going and winning matches is fun, but in the end of it, if the champion that you're playing is boring, then why are you playing video games at all? In my opinion, this is because you're forced into a rather linear style of play. You sit at the back lines and you just keep left clicking. You thread in your abilities, but in the end of it, you're just a left click bot. Now yes, you can try to go and flank, but it's simply way too slow of a tactic to go and pull off correctly. Now in the end of it, I like the fact that when you go and use Grace, you automatically reload your weapon. That is cool and all, but the fact that Grace is up so infrequently and that you can only dash where you're looking in comparison to some other characters where you dash where you're moving, that is a really, really key aspect that are not many people kind of focusing on. And overall, it really diminishes the whole flanking aspect that people are trying to go and look for. Now, the biggest comparison can be made to Cassie, who is probably one of the best champions in the game right now. Cassie has a long range crossbow, a dash of movement ability, a high damage second ability, but in this case she has a utility ultimate in comparison to the damaging ultimate of Lian. Now realistically, you can play Cassie the exact same way as Lian, sitting at the back of the map and taking people out with your crossbow. But the optimal way is to go and also combine in elements of flanking. She has a great flanking kit, despite being a damaged character. And then try and go and take the fight to your enemies, making up sneaky tactics to get one up over your opponents. 
Now with this dual identity, the user has the choice. They can decide, okay, do I want to go and flank? Do I want to just go and put out as much damage as possible? And in the end of it, people just go down for a combination of the two, maybe leaning one way, maybe leaning the other way, but she's adaptable. She's an adaptable champion, and overall, that's what makes her a really great pick. Now, she also has that utility ultimate, can really go and help out the team. Overall, a well-rounded pick, a great identity, great lore, great character design. Overall, a classic character for Paladins. And then you go back to Lian, and in the end of it, who is Lian? She's a random princess with a big gun that goes and shoots people. Cassie, she's much more independent, has this really charismatic type feel, and that is absolutely fantastic to go and play. Lian, it feels like you're simply just going and playing a lifeless character. You really don't care about the lore, you really don't care about the character, because it's just so stock and standard and has really no originality behind it. I personally feel that high res is pressuring themselves to go and release champions on a monthly basis, and the cracks they are showing. Riot Games did this many years ago, when they were trying to go and get champions out on a monthly basis, as many as possible, many as possible, try to go and beef up that roster, and it's biting them on the bum to this day. They went and pushed out many rushed characters, and they need rework after rework after rework. And I have no doubt that Paladins in the future is going along the same path. I think in a year or two, reworks will be needed. I know they're trying to go and release, you know, a ton of champions so they can try to go and do this whole pick and ban type stuff, you know, to rank the competitive scene and whatnot. But you have to go and release quality champions, not simply just a, a different side of a champion that has already been released. If you try to go and do that, then in the end of it, people are going to go and pick one or the other. And it's just completely boring, completely unoriginal. And overall, that type of design is really scary, really, really dangerous, and overall can really go and alienate a community. In the end of it, hopefully you guys enjoyed this commentary. If you agreed with me, if you completely disagreed with me, if you got insulted by the fact I called Leanne a shit tier waifu, tell me in the comment section below. I would love to go and hear it. Now, with all of that said, please go and drop a like rating if you did enjoy the video. Subscribe if you want more Paladins content. But other than that, it's Undercover Dudes, all the way from Down Under. Out.